have you ever wondered why airplanes don't fly over Antarctica? It's a question that's puzzled many a skygazer and aviation enthusiast. Today, we're going to unravel this mystery. Antarctica, the frozen frontier at the bottom of our world, remains unseen by most travelers, not because of its remote location, but due to a variety of other compelling reasons. The backbone of these reasons rests on three pillars, the harsh and unpredictable weather conditions of the region, the scarcity of suitable emergency landing spots, and the international regulations that govern our skies. These factors coalesce to create what we call the unseen route, a path over the Antarctic that is rarely, if ever, traversed by commercial airliners. Understanding these reasons not only quenches our curiosity, but also reveals the intricate considerations behind flight route planning. So buckle up and prepare for an enlightening journey. Now let's dive deeper into each of these reasons. Imagine flying in the coldest place on Earth. A chill runs down your spine at the very thought, doesn't it? Welcome to Antarctica, a continent where Mother Nature reigns supreme and the environment is as beautiful as it is harsh. Now let's talk about the extreme weather conditions that make this place so formidable for aviation. The first and most obvious factor is the intense cold. Temperatures in Antarctica can drop to minus 128 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes, you heard that right, minus 128. This extreme cold can wreak havoc on the mechanical systems of an aircraft, leading to potential breakdowns and failures. Then there's the wind. Antarctica is home to the strongest winds on Earth, with speeds often exceeding 100 miles per hour. These gales known as catabatic winds are not only strong but also incredibly unpredictable. They can change direction quickly, making it extremely challenging for pilots to maintain control of their aircraft. But the weather conditions don't stop there. In addition to the cold and the wind, pilots have to deal with whiteouts. These are conditions where visibility is reduced to nearly zero due to snowfall or blowing snow. In a whiteout, the horizon disappears and pilots can lose all sense of direction. It's like trying to navigate through a sea of milk with no landmarks to guide you. These extreme conditions combined make Antarctica a perilous place for any aircraft. The intense cold can cause mechanical failures. The high winds can make controlling the aircraft a Herculean task, and the whiteouts can leave pilots flying blind. It's like a perfect storm of hazards, a trifecta of difficulties that only the most experienced and daring pilots would even consider tackling. So, while the idea of flying over Antarctica might seem enticing, the reality is far more challenging. The wrath of nature is not something to be taken lightly, especially when you're thousands of feet up in the air, with nothing but the icy expanse of the Antarctic below. Clearly, Mother Nature poses a significant challenge for any aircraft daring to cross Antarctica. Now, imagine something goes wrong during the flight. Where would you land? That's a question pilots and airlines must consider when plotting their routes, and when it comes to Antarctica, the answer is far from reassuring. You see, Antarctica is not exactly known for its abundance of suitable landing spots. The continent is covered in ice and snow, with a terrain that is rugged and unpredictable. Landing a commercial airplane on such a surface would be a Herculean task, even for the most experienced pilot. It's not just the landing that poses a problem, but also the takeoff. The runways need to be long and flat, something that's hard to come by in this icy wilderness. Compare this to other routes flown by airlines, where there are multiple airports along the way where a plane could make an emergency landing if needed. Over the oceans there are islands and coastal airports. Over land, there are numerous airports and airstrips. But over Antarctica? The options are limited to say the least. But let's say hypothetically a plane does manage to land safely in an emergency. What then? Well, Antarctica is not exactly brimming with the necessary infrastructure for rescue operations. There are no nearby hospitals, no rescue helicopters on standby, no well-connected roads. Rescue operations in such remote and hostile environments can take days, even weeks. The lack of infrastructure is not due to a lack of effort or desire, but rather the harsh and unforgiving climate of the continent. The extreme cold, strong winds and constant snowstorms make construction and maintenance of such infrastructure a near impossible task. There are research stations scattered across the continent, yes, but they are few and far between and not equipped to handle large-scale emergencies. They are primarily designed for scientific research and not for providing emergency aid to a plane full of passengers. In conclusion, the lack of suitable emergency landing spots, combined with the absence of necessary infrastructure for rescue operations, makes flying over Antarctica a risky proposition. 
It's not just about getting from point A to point B, it's about ensuring the safety of everyone on board. So, lack of emergency landing spots is another major reason why planes avoid flying over Antarctica. Besides the natural challenges, there are man-made rules too. Now let's delve into the legal aspects that play a significant role in shaping the flight paths around the globe. One of the key factors that keep commercial flights away from Antarctica is international aviation regulations, specifically the Extended Range Twin Engine Operation Performance Standards, or ETOPS for short. ETOPS is a set of rules that determine how far a twin-engine airplane can fly from the nearest airport where it could safely land in the event of an engine failure. The rules stipulate that aircraft must be within a certain flying time, usually three hours, of a suitable landing site. Given the scarcity of such sites in Antarctica, commercial airlines would need to drastically alter their routes to adhere to these regulations, an operationally and financially impractical move. Moreover, these regulations have been established not just for safety reasons. Environmental concerns also play a significant part. The pristine wilderness of Antarctica is unlike any other place on Earth. It is the world's largest desert, home to unique ecosystems and species that thrive in its extreme conditions. The potential environmental impact of a plane crash in this untouched landscape would be catastrophic. The noise pollution caused by low-flying aircraft could also disrupt the local wildlife. Birds, such as the emperor penguin, could be frightened away from their nesting grounds, potentially leading to population declines. The fragile ice structures could also be disrupted by the vibrations caused by overhead flights. In addition to these, the fuel emissions from airplanes could contribute to the already concerning climate change effects on the Antarctic ice sheet. The burning of jet fuel releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, a greenhouse gas that contributes to global warming. With Antarctica already experiencing some of the fastest warming on the planet, additional human-caused factors are something we can ill afford. In essence, these regulations and environmental concerns ensure that the sky above Antarctica remains as untouched as the land below. So, the rules of the sky also contribute to the absence of commercial flights over Antarctica. But what about the economic aspect of flying over Antarctica? When it comes to the aviation industry, economics is king. Airlines are businesses, after all, and they are constantly weighing the costs and benefits of their flight routes. The Antarctica route, while intriguing on a map, simply doesn't make economic sense for several reasons. Firstly, let's discuss flight time. The Antarctica route might seem like a shortcut on a two-dimensional map, but in reality, it's quite the opposite. The Earth is a sphere, and the shortest distance between two points on a sphere is not a straight line but a curve, or what we call a great circle. If you plot the great circles from, say, New York to Sydney, you'll see that it goes over the Pacific Ocean not Antarctica, so flying over Antarctica would actually lengthen the flight time, not shorten it. Now, longer flights mean more fuel, and as you can probably guess, fuel is one of the biggest expenses for airlines. The cost of jet fuel can eat up to a third of an airline's operating expenses, so a longer flight over Antarctica, with its increased fuel consumption, would significantly raise the cost of the flight, and then there's the demand, or rather, the lack thereof. The majority of air travel is between the Northern Hemisphere's major population and business centers. There's simply not enough demand for flights that would benefit from an Antarctic route. Airlines can't justify the extra costs if there aren't enough passengers willing to pay for these flights. Finally, there's the issue of aircraft range. Most commercial aircraft don't have the range to fly over Antarctica without refueling, and with no airports to land on, they would be taking a serious risk. So when we look at the economic aspect, it's clear that the Antarctica route is a losing proposition for airlines. It's not just about the potential dangers or the regulations, the financial implications are just as compelling. So economics also plays a crucial role in why planes don't fly over Antarctica. So why don't airplanes fly over Antarctica? We've discussed this intriguing question at length. The inhospitable weather conditions make it an unsurvivable location for any plane that may need to make an emergency landing. Blizzards, extreme cold, and high winds can turn a simple mechanical issue into a deadly situation. Moreover, the lack of emergency landing spots is a significant factor. Antarctica's vast and barren, icy expanse offers no safe havens for an aircraft in distress. We also cannot overlook the international regulations that govern our skies. These rules, for good reason, discourage flights over this treacherous territory. 
Lastly, there's the economic aspect to consider the additional fuel costs and potential risks outweigh any time-saving benefits, making these routes economically unviable. It's a combination of these factors that keeps our flights away from the icy continent. So next time you take a flight, remember the unseen route over Antarctica.